everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this Maiden in Snow. This is a painting I actually did for one of our community members who supported us through, uh, I think this was specifically for the St. Jude Live, and she, I just did a custom painting for her, so it was just a weird series of events, but I really love this painting, and it was one I wanted to share with you while the weather was still cold, and we were still feeling a little, a smidge romantic about snow if you're in a place that there is snow on the ground. But you don't have to splatter it if you're not feeling it. On the mic is gonna be my husband, John. Hey guys. He's going to track us with our cameras so that you can see all the action because the idea is I'm gonna explain every step of this process. Every element of it is going to be shared with you so you can create this at home. And so you can make these paintings yourself. We've rated this at a two hoot difficulty, which means for beginners, um, if you've never ever ever painted before, this might be a little bit of a challenge, but it would be pretty easy if you were like, say, 10 or 20 paintings and you'd be like, oh yeah, I kind of know all these terms. You could still do it if you were really, really new. In the description below on YouTube, I include a ton of information. It can be hard to find on your mobile devices, but the full materials list is down there. Everything's down there on top of a link to the website where the traceable is located. But I've added a bunch of extra stuff, including a step-by-step -step on how to draw her in. If you're just working on drawing more, uh, it's not required that you draw to do this, but I get asked for that a lot. So I'm trying to add some more meat to the website. You can go by there, you can post pictures, you can leave comments and you can check ratings. And the material list is much easier to find there. It's just a more user-friendly interface. You guys are ready to turn around and jump into this? Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. One, two, three. Oh, dude, <laughs> you like brought it. <laughs> you like brought it hardcore. All right. Um, right. I'm just a little bit like, wow, I didn't expect you to be able to get the frame in and the flip. I'm impressed. <laughs> now, today's materials are pretty easy. I have an 11 by 14 art panel here. It's not really like an artist panel archival, but these are the artist loft packs that come in packs of five. Um, they're economic and they're easy to store. You could do this on canvas. It doesn't have to be on this. You could do this on paper for acrylic painting. It's surface here. As long as you're feeling confident in it, you should be okay. I have some wishes on here. Do you? Yeah. And the first one, these first two wishes are about that a large number of our community are going through this and we're just wishing that this gets better for them. The first one is we're looking for a cure, treatment, compassion, and understanding for fibromyalgia. Um, many, many, many members of our community um, have fibromyalgia and, you know, they're struggling with that daily pain. And so they're doing art to manage that. It is really fantastic that art can help. But I want more for you guys. So more treatments, more cure, more compassion. The other illness that is definitely impacted many, many members of our community is Lyme disease. Mm. Yeah. Now, I um I can't say it because it's cussing, but one of our members has a really funny rhyme that uh, ticks are blank that really cracked me up. And I realized they really kind of are blank um, because they, uh, you know, are little blood suckers, right? Which is never my favorite. But when I was a girl growing up with horses, even though we had a lot of ticks, there wasn't a lot of Lyme disease. Do you remember a lot of Lyme disease when you were young, John? No, I was in the scouts and yeah. it was very uncommon. But now it's a big deal and it's everywhere and it's, for whatever reason, it's spreading and it's real hard to get doctors to acknowledge that it's even going on sometimes. So it's hard to even acknowledge that it's spreading. Having lived a minute though, I'd like to officially say, I think it's spreading mm. <laughs> and is more widespread than it ever has been before. So lots of love, compassion, healing, and treatment for that. Harmony between genders is a wish that's come in. And what we mean by that is just like peace between men and women. Like we got to get along better. So peace between men and women. Um, and compassion in your life. If you've been struggling to have compassion for somebody you don't understand, I'm wishing for you that you find compassion for somebody you don't understand. Let's look at our paint. All right. The colors today are black, burnt sienna, Cad red medium, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow, burnt sienna, thalo blue, thalo green, and titanium white. I probably will be using a little bit of gloss glazing liquid for this, but the colors are transparent. So if you don't have it, you won't, oh, or like we're everywhere, you won't be messed up at all. 
Um, I'm also going to be using some fluid black paint and some fluid white paint. If you go to the website and you get that color sheet, um, you'll see cute little graphics that represent the fluid paints. And basically what that means is that it literally what it sounds, heavy body paint is stiff and full bodied and fluid paint is runny more like oil. Let's put out our colors to begin the background, which is sort of a fun background. Yeah. You ready for it, John? I'm ready for it. Are you ready? Is everyone here ready for it? I'm ready. I'm I know ready. that was sort of a PSA lime announcement, but it's a real problem. Yeah. It's just like, it's something that I've noticed. I rode horses. I did it. Uh, I did trail riding as a girl in the National American Trail Riding Conference. I put as many miles on my horse as most people have on their cars. And I did it around the country, so I've seen a lot of different terrain. And I have to tell you, all of that being out in nature, exposed to an animal that literally attracts ticks, and we had hundreds of ticks a ride, never got Lyme disease. That's a little scary and gross, but it really was like a thing we went through. Well, in a I know how to remove a tick. <laughs> in, a, in a totally smooth segue, mm -hmm. I'm going to say hey to Ireland. <laughs> Because you know when I when I when Ireland comes together, I think of no ticks. I don't think they have I don't think they have snakes or ticks in Ireland, but they don't brag about the ticks, which you nope. guys should brag about. But I do like Ireland, and some uh, folks from Ireland just came by, so I was like, "Hey!" I Ireland. also like Ireland. I raise a pint to you guys. Have a good time. I'll raise a cup of coffee because I'm mer merkin. 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 <laughs> so coffee. And and maybe we'll be Canadians, but right now we're Americans. Right now, Merkin. All right, so I have put out. To do this background and you should do the same i put out a little bit of thalo green and thalo blue and so tit some titanium white and i'm going to use this to create thalo turquoise and use the white to create kind of a flurry snow effect and i'm going to do it on the whole background just because it's going to make it easy for me let's use i'm going to use this artist knife here this little cranked trowel and i'm going to pull out one part of my blue and one part of my green and i mix these together and voila, thalo turquoise. Now, Holbein Paint does a thalo turquoise I really like, and Matisse Paint does, a, they call it Southern Ocean Blue, but it's a thalo turquoise that I really like. However, you can just mix it anytime you need it. Just depends on how you want to treat yourself if you want to put that into your life. So you can see I've thoroughly mixed that. I've incorporated those two colors together. You could do that with a brush if you didn't have an artist knife. I'm going to use uh, whatever my biggest brush is that I have out, which I think is this one right here. It is a number 26 short-handled braid. Before you go on real quick, I noticed that over there, you used a towel to wipe off your palette knife. Yes. Rather than cleaning it. Is that, and, and you, that's a better way of going about it than I don't know it's it in water? better. I mean, you could swish it around in water, but I find that the, at least mine clean really easily with a towel. I, baby wipes is probably the best. And you wipe off a lot with that towel. Yeah, I do. I have a towel that I totally destroy with acrylic paint, and then um, I wash it. <laughs> gotcha. All right, I'm going to get this brush wet. Um, just something I want to say about this. It's a number 26 bright. In a long handle, if the handle were really long, this number would be smaller. I'd say it'd probably be a number 12 bright, just to let you know the differences. Now I'm going to load a little bit of this thalo turquoise onto my brush. So it's wet, and I'm pulling it both sides, pulling it back, and that's going to get a lot of paint into the belly. And now I'm going to loosely mix. And when I say loosely mix, can you see that I'm not incorporating it thoroughly? I see something. Or it's, there's a whole thing there. And I'm going to just brush. Look at that. Back and forth. So easy. Snowy day. Look at me go. Look at you go. Snowy day. Everything a-okay. So we're painting today, which means things have got to be kind of all right in the world. If there's art, we're still doing all right. I'm going to just cover my entire canvas with this technique. Can you see how the loose mix allows these streaks to happen, which implies the snow? Yes. Yeah. Fun technique. Here I am pulling it out. See that little load there? Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. See? Loosely mixed. Hello, sweet. Sometimes I dip in the water to improve flow, but just the tip of the brush. Who are we saying hello to? Sweden. Oh, hey, Sweden. Is it, is it Mona? Uh, no. No, Mona's not from Sweden anyways. Is she? Uh, I believe she is. Okay. 
I was about to. So she, she's again, not Swiss. I'm gonna go Merkin. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the big forest? It's it's the Sweden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the big forest where Rick is, right? Yep. There's lots of big forests up there. We Americans just aren't familiar with them. <laughs> but there's like one in the movies where I'm like, that's a big forest, and every time they talk about the set, like where it was staged, it was like, oh, that's. I didn't know that that was there. I think that's the great big gigantic forest up in the northern Sweden. Yeah. It's cool forest. It's very cool forest. They have I'm... very cool reindeer. And Don't really their cool. reindeer like eat mushrooms to get like real frosty? All, all reindeer do. I think that's really funny how mushrooms are connected to Santa Claus like completely blew my mind. I think that's one thing that YouTube has definitely changed in my life in the same way that uh, maybe Google changed information, which is that you can watch some pretty interesting people share their fields of expertise in these crazy little videos. And John um, is a big fan of mushrooms. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about mushrooms being connected to health and well-being and treating Crohn's. So we watch a lot of information on how the world would be better if we just covered it with mushrooms, which may or may not be a plant. I'm still trying to not be disturbed by that bit of information. So this is what you should do when you're covering a canvas. You should listen talk. to music or talk about <laughs> random things. Just have a good time. This is what marriage is all about, right? I don't know. Our marriage is about this. All right, I'm going to flip this around so it's easy for me. I'm going to keep going in the direction, this diagonal direction. You guys enjoying this? Yes. You guys making diagonal brush strokes? I have to ask that question because I don't have cameras in your home. And as helpful as that might be for me as a teacher, that would be creepy for you as a student. So This is a remarkably, you know, we have a lot of feedback from our community. I'm, I'm surprised. You guys, I love all the pictures you post up. Thank you for sharing on our website. Yeah, awesome. Uh, one of the things that I love is the new share feature on the bottom of our website. So when you guys post a comment or upload your picture, it stays attached to the project page. And I've just loved seeing everyone who's done that. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for going by and giving your own experience, sharing your own art stories for the next artist coming by. That really helps somebody who might be where you are right now, you know, later and wondering what they can do and how hard it actually is for somebody new. You guys really help more than you realize. I am just being fussy now, making my snow interesting. Look how I'm doing this. Make your snow interesting, guys. So I'm going to get more focused up here and making my snow interesting. And what I mean by that is I'll grab a little bit of white, not too much blue, and I'll just make sure that there's some... See, I'm doing this little streakiness. Streakiness. I want to make sure that that snow is super implied. Implied means I didn't actually paint snow. I implied a symbol of snow. This is all kind of an illusion anyway, isn't it? It's a flat surface, so I'm definitely not painting in, you know, <laughs> in some sense. Yes, all art is illusion, but don't rub that in the artist's face because we're not really comfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is, don't, don't speak too literal here. <laughs> no, man, I'm not. It's all real. It's my world. I'm going to draw my canvas now and make you talk to everybody by yourself, John. But fine. Yeah? Okay. Okay. But so when she's doing that, it'd be like, hey, guys, 505 people. Wow, that's a lot of people. Hello. More, more and more. Hi, guys. You know, this is my favorite thing in the world to be able to do this, to come together, to be able to paint and talk to you guys and celebrate this art thing together. Thank you for coming and doing that. I really appreciate it. So, um, here, another great segue. If you're using your hairdryer at home, don't use it on the high heat setting because it can cause shrinkage and color shift. And I know you may have may not have heard that before, but it's true. And the last thing you want to do is turn your hair dryer on, put it on high heat, and then it ruins the painting that you're doing. So that's why I keep saying this over and over. Don't use it on high heat. Just use the air because it will do the drying without the color shifting. So anyway. Hello. Did you give them your PSA about color shift? I did. You love that PSA about color a, shift. I'm going to sip my coffee. It's a, I mean, like, raise my raise my java bean because I don't have a pint. Well, I was just saying. I don't drink it. The last thing you want to do is use heat and then ruin a painting. So it best thing to do is just not use heat because then you won't run the risk of doing that. Oh, no. I got the yellow smudge all over the wall. All right. That's okay. 
So I'm going to demo how to do the traceable. And I actually used a printout from my computer this time because I was asked for that. So you guys can kind of see how this would work. Um, on the website, there is a step-by-step -step that demos the steps on how I drew and designed this. If you guys want to do that, that's perfectly acceptable. But just know tracing is not cheating. Tracing is an art skill that you've got to develop. And whenever you see artists that are working with really high-end materials, they will tell you that because they'll be like, uh, yeah, no, I don't do my experimental drawing, you know, uh, just on my paper. I, you know, I leave that for rendering masters, but since I'm not one of those, definitely, definitely going to get my drawing worked out of the way. Now I placed my girl here so that she's got some room above where I can put some branches. I've got lots of room for the skirt. Her waist is just below the halfway point. I think her hand in this particular case is right at the halfway point. You can enlarge from your printer or reduce. So you can definitely size this differently if you have a different size canvas. And um, Raster, which is an online free software, will tile these for you to any size. And then you just tape them together. So you can make your traceable any size. If you didn't know that, which you might not have. On the back of my traceable, I have something called Serral paper. It is a transfer paper for painting. It is in the description below and it is on the website in the material sheet. So you will be able to get that if that's something that you want. But you could also just rub pastel or chalk or something on the back. Now I'm not going to paint like every, I mean, uh, trace every single line that I have here because I'm going to just paint those in. But you could, if you felt like you needed it, every single line, you would be okay. I'm going to get just the sort of outline of her head and her hair. And that helps, you know, these paintings be really close to each other. Do her little neck. Hopefully you guys that are doing the drawing tutorial found that helpful and useful. And you were like, hey, this is great. Get my little line here. Da -da -da -da. There we go. Coming down here. The hand is one of my favorite parts of this whole piece. This reminds me of the square painting you did back in Hockley. Well, it wasn't square. It was a rectangle, was but yeah, rectangle? I loved her. With the with the angled frame? Mm-hmm. It had the it was the Beck uh Beckware Beck Bickford frame. So I don't really need the branches or any of that or her placement. I've kind of got that in my head. I just need to know the overall outer constructs of hers. That's all I need. You put as much information in as you need. Don't feel bad about it. I'm going to start putting out my other colors so I can paint the rest of my painting. Now, can, yes. there was some there was. A, I'm so into questions, so ask them, Mr. Cooney. Silver Sky was asking, what's the difference between Mars Black, Lamp Black, and Carbon Black? I have a whole video about that called All the Blacks, and I even talk about chromatic black. Um, what I would say, the only black you would want to avoid using for this particular painting probably would be bone, um, bone black. But use carbon or black, lamp black uh, just fine, or Mars black, any of them, because they're black enough. But the bone black isn't very tinting. Dun, dun, dun. I just think I just need one more, which is... My burnt sienna, which I can't find because I moved everything over here. <laughs> Go figure. I'm going to share that up for everybody oh, yeah? right here. All right. What are we sharing up? The, that page. Okay. That's cool. So I have just put out my cad red, my cad yellow, my magenta, my quinacridone magenta, and my burnt sienna. The black and white I'm going to use today, I probably... Uh, We'll do most of it with the two fluids, but I may put out a smidge, and you may want to put out a smidge of this uh, heavy body black just in case you have to darken the um, pine branches anymore. It'll be really dependent on how, like, pigmented your paint is. Now, the next thing is going to be finding a brush that's small enough to paint the next things, and we've also got to make, did I have yellow ochre in this list or no? I'll have to be checked. I feel like I have to have yellow ochre. Like yellow, uh, me yellow ochre. Yes. Yes. It's there. I knew it. Oh, she's gone. 
Watch your for free. Well, I'm somewhat free. I'm still over here and I'm looking for, oh, there it is. <laughs> See, that's why the material list is in the description below. <laughs> it's super helpful. The reason I need yellow ochre is actually for her skin tone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my artist knife again and I'm going to pull out a little bit of my um, magenta here and quite a lot of my yellow ochre. And this is the basis of the skin tone that I'm going to be doing on her. I want it slightly pinker, you know, more, more to the pink than to the yellow. But I find it's better to add the magenta in at slow bits so that I don't go too far because it's, it's easier to darken than lighten a color. See how quite pink that is? Yeah. That's pretty pink. That is wonderful. I just wiped off as John had asked about earlier. I've got to think about this placement of objects because that didn't work in. You don't need to see a whole video of me looking for something. That seems weird. All right. I'm going to take a small brush. I'm going to take this uh, filbert here. This is a number two filbert. You could use a small round. You could use a small brighter flat. I just want to be able to paint in this area. I'm going to start working on her face. So I'm loading up with my nice pink color and I'm going to add white to it. And what I want is a very, 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 very light color. See how much white I'm adding to that? Very light. We want it to be light. You can always get a smidge of ochre if you need a little more in there. But you can see it doesn't take very much to just throw the whole thing off. There we go. And when you get it to the perfect place, you're like, oh, that's so perfect. Put one coat on there. It takes a couple coats to really get this effect. Did you just pick some water up there? I did. Okay. Because my brush wasn't easily uh, leaving paint on the canvas. And either I didn't load up enough paint, which I know I did, or the paint is too dry. So that's why I went and grabbed water. Because I felt like probably what's happening here is that the paint is too dry. Now I am going to very carefully pull the paint across her face to kind of smooth it out and actually reduce streaks as much as possible for this style of painting. That's a little bit important. I'm going to give myself a nice edge here and grab another bit there. Come down the neck. Again, soft, 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 right? Takes a couple coats to do this to get this look right, but we got to get this first layer on. Now, if your yellow line is messy, if your tracing line is messy, Remember that you can remove it with a damp brush. I feel very educated today. It's more of a class than, than a party right now. But we're doing skin tones, and that's always sort of overwhelming, isn't it? I have a bunch yeah. of videos on skin tones, so if you want to do a different skin tone, if you want to do a different girl, different hair, I have videos for all that. Because I understand sometimes we need to customize our paintings to reflect ourselves or our life. And I think that's a reasonable artistic choice to make. Yeah, I'm li I'll link up right now the, uh, the hair, skin, skin tones video, all that. Okay, so now I'm going to get the hand going. Da -da 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 -da. Just paint that all in. Painting that all in. Get that finger kind of going out there. It's nice to have that finger be long and then, you know, each finger that I put next to that, that's going to pull in. And that's fun for me. Put a finger, put a finger. And then I'm going to rinse out. And in this particular case, I've got to take that little yellow line back because it's too big for what I want to do with my hand. See how I'm reducing that? Yeah. There we go. I want the hand to be quite delicate. 
Now the next color that I'm going to do, interestingly enough, is I'm going to take out a little bit of my green and some of my brown. I want m about two parts green to one part brown. And right here in her kimono, I'm going to add this dark, dark green. And understand like that, you know, in fabric and textiles, colors like this were a big deal. And I don't know if you have priced kimonos lately, traditional wear, but dang, <laughs> he's not cheap. These are as much artistry as any painting that I and my, my poor little hands could possibly do. All right. But I am adding that darker green. So under the sleeve, I have a little darker green. And in the crook here, I have a little darker green. Behind the hand, I'm definitely going to want darker green. Kind of going around that. And then a little bit underneath here. And then even coming down the sleeve. Just this nice shadow. Again, most of this is going to take a couple coats. I'm painting pro paint. And I'm going to need a couple coats. So if you're painting student paint, you know you're going to need a couple coats. Or if you didn't know, guess what? You're going to need a couple coats. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! I'm going to put some more green into that mix and grab a good grip of yellow. This is going to help me make a brighter green that I'm going to... That's just distracting, John. <laughs> What's that? The, the bubble wrap going on oh. in the background. <laughs> Only you could hear it. But it's so loud. <laughs> so I'm going to just put these here. This is, again, the first coat. There's going to be more coats, but we're just doing what's called blocking in. You want to block things in sometimes. You need more yellow, you just grab it. Notice I haven't really switched brushes. Which one is it you're using? I'm doing the number two uh, filbert. I really like filberts when I'm having to do faces or skin tones or delicate work. It's a preference. It's not a requirement. You know, you could do any small brush that you were comfortable with and you had a lot of control of. I mean, if you're like sitting at home going, but I have no control over any brush I have. Wait, you will. Believe in yourself. It will come in time. Down here with this fabulous, 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 fabulous skirt. I know I'm going to be putting in that I'm super excited about. I am going to rinse my brush out super thoroughly. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to do one of my very favorite mixes, which is quinacridone magenta and cad red. Just one of my favorites. I love it so much. I'm going to put this right here. Right there, that wonderful little sash, you know, goes around her waist. And then I'm going to definitely, definitely do the banding in this red, too. Color is just one of the best colors. And again, remember, it's like the first coat. Doesn't have to be perfect. But we do need to start getting these colors on here. Dipping in the water. I'm going to move this closer so I'm not having to look in. Maybe get the cleaner water. Again, if I dip in the water, it's because the flow of my brush is not pleasing me. And you can see how I use the edge of my brush to get control over every brush stroke. That's really helpful to me. I'm going to come up the shoulder. And make sure that that is painted too. It's occurred to me I need the big green inside here. And a little bit of green right there. So I'm going to grab some of my green and maybe get a little bit of my burnt sienna into its dark. 
and make sure that the inside of the sleeve has green as it would because it would be lined and honestly in this world it's my fashion design so it is lined everything on your canvas is your world belongs to you you can make decisions in it willy-nilly as you see fit so you can see this is sort of just really roughly painted it's not elegant or anything at this point it's very very roughly painted i'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of black I'm dipping in the water to improve the flow and i'm going to do at least the first coat of her hair in the heavy body paint i will use the soft body paint for the tendrils because I find that helps me. And I definitely, definitely want two coats of this. Like the whole time I was doing this, I was thinking of the myth of Snow White. Do you remember the myth of Snow White, John? Uh, yeah. The fairy tale. Did you, now were you only Disney or did you get the Grimm's? Oh, I've, I've, I've heard them all. It was later okay. in life that I heard the Grimm collection. But yeah. you know, it wasn't like I got it as childhood, but I, you know, childhood was Disney, but more. Okay, I, so my parents did Grimm. I, I was much more like. <laughs> I got the Princess Bride original version. The Dark Crystal. <gasps> Love the Dark Crystal. But that was kind of my jam. That was supposed time. to be on Netflix, and I never saw it come up. When did they move that to? I don't know. I am not. I believe you me, you'll know when I know because there'll be a Skeksis to be painted. I That's happening. Hold... Yeah. Some Brian Froud style fairies. That's happening. I am not holder of the remote or knower of what is on the TV or That's true. I do. In in our house, I am the 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 TV <laughs> mo I'm I guard the TV. It's I'm that person. <laughs> I'm just gonna own it. I know who I am. She's got her shows. I do. I don't. That's Thank you, fairly... Andy Cohen. Sherwell? <laughs> Maybe that's the correct way of saying it. Now, I'm going to do my uh, pine branches with this as well. I may have to move to a bigger branch, I mean brush, but I think I will get the best result from this. So if you guys don't mind doing it a small bit slower, we'll do it this way. So I'm going to loosely mix some of my green. Here with some of my brown. See, it's kind of like this hot mess. And definitely maybe pull a little bit of white into that loose mix. And then here's how you do. I'm going to add more branches. When I originally designed her, I didn't put any more branches in, but now that I'm doing her, I feel like I want more. So I'm going to bring a little curved branch this way and maybe this way, this way. This way. There we go. So I've got an interesting little trek of branches right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that loose mix of color. And I'm going to just very carefully zipper. Okay, I'm zippering my little pine. Zipper that little pine. That's a really cool technique. It's very directional. It's all about the direction and the way that you're doing this. Uh, you don't have to have a filbert though to do it, guys. You could do this with any brush. You're just talking about a brush that gives you nice, small, organized little brush strokes that you can lean into. I wonder if Miss Patty is here who owns the original. Mm. I will look around. Can't imagine not. <laughs> I mean, it's his life. <laughs> Might have other things you'd like to do. It's true. There are reruns. So I find that I like to do these in two stages, the dark color and then a lighter color. It comes over. So that's what we're doing. We're getting that first basis of these branches in. Right? So that these are going to have more than just these sort of zippered little lines. This is just stage one. Thus, the two hoot, right? It's about how we start these pine branches. Little brush, Ariana. Hi, Ariana. Oh, I love your name. Very pretty name. 
she's going to be trying this in watercolor. Oh, you're going to like that. This is going to be a lot of fun to paint in watercolor. So could she use the traceable as a guide? I would definitely use the traceable as a guide. And honestly, you can buy watercolor paper for your printer mm. and print right on watercolor paper. Sort of an interesting thing. People don't know they can do that. That'd yeah, be a really definitely good idea. feel free to use the traceable and do this in watercolor if you want to do this in pastel or, or some other process. That's Of course, that's okay. I just asked, don't use my art for evil. <laughs> hmm. yep. You laugh, That's... but that like literally does happen. So I, no, I, no, we're just going to stay focused on the good. That's right. Yes. Don't use this art for bad stuff. Yeah. Don't because do it. It's I mean, for good stuff only. Yes. It would I'm be... not really worried about the little brushes. It's the big brushes that I worry about. <laughs> I think your glasses are pretty fabulous. Oh, thank you very much. You know who rhinestone them? No. Spider. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I think these were honey, and he did another, Spider did another pair that were sunglasses that he made from, for me from scratch. Because I'm a rhinestone cowboy. cowboy. Ooh, we can't sing. You no, can. No, John, is... Now, in all fairness, John probably actually can sing. He's, like, got, I don't know, perfect pitch or something. He can hear, tune piano by can, ear. Well, I can tell you what note someone plays. Oh, okay. What is that called? Isn't that called perfect pitch? Sometimes. Okay. I'm not always accurate. I'm just most of the time. Depends on the instrument, too. I'm more tuned to brass instruments than I am stringed or woodwinds, but more or less it's all the same. It just takes a minute. But it's been a long time. It's also a game you have to keep up. So It's a game you got to keep up? It's a game? It's a game. If anyone who's ever been in a band, they know it's a game. Now, I think that we should uh, maybe have one come down here. Well, definitely, definitely. I'll do a little one here. The thing is, what I'm trying to do is frame around her these pine branches as if she's going through a forest where the fresh snow is happening. Just doing these. You can do these as thin as you want, needle-like as you want. You can do them fatter. It really isn't something that you're going to get right or wrong. You just want to make sure that you do them and you get both layers. I'm going to rinse out. Paint can start drying on your brushes as you paint. People don't know that's a thing, but it's a thing. So you'll see I grab brown every once in a while to kind of loosely mix into this mix. This will help that deep kind of Deep kind of painting. All right, let's put a couple here or one here. You really just got to do this to uh, to taste. You know, they'll say that when you're cooking in a cooking show, salt to taste. That's some dangerous instruction right there, isn't it? Mm hmm. My son would be like, all the salt, please. As soon as it tastes just like the ocean, that would be the perfect amount of salt. Thank you. If we could add some carbs and sugar to that salt, it would be perfect. Dipping in the water, improving the flow. Now I'm going to make sure that I've got a couple. Maybe it's coming out here. And then I can. Drop some like that. So what I'm, again, just trying to make sure that I've got a little framing of some snow. So see, I'm just making little marks to, like, determine where I want to go. And I feel like that's a nice arrangement and won't take me too much longer to get that done. So that feels like worth the effort. I like to say, is the juice worth the squeeze? 
So what that basically means in art is the effort you're making to get the technique, is it worth the result you're getting out of the painting? Right? So if you're doing something very fussy, but you're not getting that great of a result, the juice would not be worth the squeeze. But if you're getting a great result, then being fussy is worth it. It's really about your outcome. Are we liking the placement of stuff around her? Yeah. I can take questions while I'm planting leaves on the rest of this. I really think I've said everything we could say about these leaves other than just doing them in. Let's all just do them in. You don't have anything? I really. I mean, I don't think there's anything deeper to say than we zippering up some leaves until I get to the next color. You don't have anything more to say. No, I mean, of course I have more to say. I'm a talky person, but. Okay. Just, you know, I was having a moment there like, really? Oh, there's not, stop. You couldn't go into more about like, you know, how not to clone these? Do you want me to talk about cloning? No, I'm just, <laughs> now this is just me going, wait a minute, there's not more here? I can't believe that. There's not, but uh, let me go in here. Well, see. they're supposed to do exactly what I did, so they didn't clone. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> because I didn't clone. When we're talking about cloning, what we're saying is I just paint the same exact branch in little ordered ways again and again and again and again. I'm going to have a whole video about cloning. So, Mighty Nan was asking. Mighty Nan? Nan. Maybe Nan. it's Nan. Okay, because I was about to be like, Mighty Nan. That's Mighty just, Nan. You like, are the best, Brett. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like like the British Nan, like you're my Nan. So like it's a mighty Nan. I'm not sure how. Dude, either is. way. So either you're way. You're awesome sauce. All right. So where did it go? There's a question. Oh, what are the best type of brushes? So here's what I'll say about brushes. Obviously, I am biased to the brushes that I make, right, with my brush maker and the brushes that she makes just in general. Um, that being said, and I have a bunch of videos on brushes, what you want is a brush maker that's been in business for a while, who has a very good customer service. You want your ferrules to be seated to the handle. And in acrylic brushes, for the most part, synthetic is better than natural. So like, it wouldn't be nice to have a sable hair brush in acrylic for the most part or goat hair because they're too soft and they pull in too much water. So you do want some synthetic. Um, there's one exception that I like to paint with called the Cambridge, which is boar hair bristles and synthetic bristles, and it has a nice balance between the two worlds. But try to pick a brush where you've got, you know, it's firm enough to handle the heavy body paint you're painting with, it's not weak sauce, it um, holds up really well. A good acrylic brush will be resilient because acrylic kills brushes watercolor does not kill brushes spend all the money you want on a watercolor brush that thing's gonna last forever unless you do something crazy with it but acrylic brushes they are going to pass on at some point and cross over into the light like carol ann go into the light acrylic brush go into the light now the brush you use is the best brush i think i think it's a good way of putting it the brush you use that said, I do like my own brushes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like. But I am biased. <laughs> sure, and you should be. <laughs> Emotionally, finance, every way you can be biased, I'm biased about my own brushes. But for good reason. I was biased before they were my brushes. I'm not sure where I picked that up from, but it was like there were some sort of tools or something. No, that but... was when we were at Creator Day, and they were, uh, so there's this thing YouTube does where you go to Creator Day, and bigger YouTubers talk to YouTubers that are coming on the platform, and try to say encouraging things, and John actually came up with it, somebody was like, what, what was the best camera or editing software or something, oh, and John's like, right. the one you use. That's where I got it from. <laughs> from yourself, you're quoting yourself, John, how weird is that? I don't know, it's, what's worse is I couldn't remember I was quoting myself. <laughs> So, yeah, they actually had us, is some of the creators that were up on the panel, like, talking about, like, wouldn't you succeed at YouTube? That's right. I forgot about that. I'm like, I don't really feel like I have good advice to get here. <laughs> don't you guys think this is a nice arrangement of, like, uh, branches that we have here? I do. And I do I like, like the, the cluster. That, and I just thought of the Lex. That's what happened to me just now. <laughs> ADD. ADD is in effect. Now I'm going to get a 
smaller, smallish Cambridge. I'm looking at her skirt and I'm thinking the number eight. So this brush I just mentioned, the Cambridge, it is a mix of bristles and synthetic filament. I love this for scumbling, for dry brushing, for many, many techniques. I think it's a fantastic tool. And I really like the brights because they're short length up. I'm going to dip in water a little bit and I'm going to come in my first layer. I'm going to add a little bit of the pad to this and I may flip this upside down so I have nice long strokes because you want nice long strokes. And I'm going to begin the basis of the skirt. Now on the edge of the skirt, I will come out on the edge bristles and kind of make it fluffy. I do want it to be fluffy. And her skirt takes a couple layers of paint. Couple layers of paint. <laughs> All right. Man, our community is teeing us up today. What 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 now? Sorry, so I got Lindsay a little, would like Did to know, I get a little over eager there? What brush cleaner? is great for acrylic and where can I get it? Uh, my brush cleaner is great for acrylic and you can't get it yet. Uh, <laughs> Outside of that, you know, um, they do make a, a brush that's general soap is pretty okay. There's Rich, Richeson uh, Jack Oil soap is okay. There's the pink soap. Um, the Chelsea Classical Studio is pretty okay. If you don't mind paying that, well, mine isn't going to be much cheaper, but... <laughs> You know, there's some soap and Dawn, not that bad. The big deal is getting the paint out of the brush. That's the big, big deal. So, so elbow as, grease is pretty good too. I, I will pass along based on our research and development. There are some soaps that are better and faster at removing the acrylic from the brush. And pull it right out of the bristles the, and recover dead brushes. But at the oh, end of the day... It is the effect of getting the brushes clean that keeps them alive and preserved. Yeah. So as long as you clean them, and you may have to clean them several times in hot water to get all that acrylic out. And, you know. Yeah, it's good to use warmer water, not necessarily boiling hot, but warmer yeah. water. That helps soften the acrylic and helps work it out. You don't want to leave your brushes to the paint to dry on them. You want to rinse them out and lie them flat between you know, your painting techniques. Definitely, definitely want to do that. Definitely, definitely. All right, and keep going. Now I'm going to come right here along the top of the skirt. And if you remember, we talked about being a little bit fluffy with those brush strokes. We need a slightly fluffy brush stroke because we want this to be like, I realize like traditionally no one would have tool, but I felt like if tool had been available, it would have been used. So I went with that. And doing these little kind of edge strokes, which make it feel fluffy and tooly. But not the bad kind of tooly, the good kind. Now, I think I've got that in enough that I can flip it around. And you can see this first coat, kind of a big deal. Need to have it. First skirt, when I did her, was several layers. And we're not going to skip on that part. Cool? Cool. We're going to do all the layers. When is our art soap going to premiere? I don't know. You're you're in charge of that. When it finishes drying. Is it, uh, is it dry yet? That's, that's really all it is. We're just waiting for it to finish dry. It's 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 hard soap, not a liquid soap. So, uh, it a hard soap works better, lasts longer. So we in our determination, it was better to produce the better product, even though it took longer, than to produce a liquid soap that while we could sell a lot more of it. Hey, honey. It wouldn't get be as effective. Fresh water and a heated coffee. Thank you, so, darling. Thank you, that was you. what it is. We got it is some, what it is. Is what it is. It's soap dries slower than paint. <laughs> really slow. Really slow. Really slow. Things and you don't know about soap. Soap dries slow. And if if you're at home, if you're using a bar soap or a hard soap, a bar soap, it's best to let it dry out between usage. PSA, good things to know. So, things you learn. Things you learn. I'm looking for a tiny, tiny detail brush. I don't know where they're I think at. I'll use the number one monogram liner today. Okay. Is what I think I'm going to use. You think and so? I put out some of my fluid black paint here, and I've got my burnt sienna. And I'm going to go ahead and load a little bit into my brush, and then get a little bit of the brown in here. 
And a couple of things are going to happen. The black's going to improve flow and the brown's going to make it seem more branchy. And then I am, I'm going to wait to do the, the two final twigs here, but I can go ahead and put a lot of the branch out early. So what I do is I come on the edge of the brush. Let me get some water in here because I've got to, I've got to make sure that it comes off my brush super detailed. So the lighter I press, the finer the line. I'm going to wander this up. And then as I come out, you can see I just go, look how fine that line gets. If I can, if I can see it, I have a little sprayer. Oh, here it is. Getting in my thing. Another trick I can do is I can spray right there. And that will give me more water to work with to help improve the flow. So I'm not having to try to get a bunch of water with a little brush out of my water jug. Now you'll notice that this line is very wiggly. You'll notice that it's thicker here at the hand and finer here on the way out. About here, I'm going to take a little branch out. Maybe another little one right here. I love the berries. I'm going berry heavy. Very heavy. Very heavy is happening. Kimla says she likes our new frame. Yeah. Lots of folks have been commenting on that. So I just noticed that Kimla's coming up. So I'd pass that along. We just thought, you know, we're artists. We should be arty with our formatting. I mean, I got to float over here with my head anyways. We got to hold the painting up anyway. So might as well make it fun. But this is only a taste of what's to come. It's true. Back in, you know, these are all the pieces of our studio that are now coming to fruition. Back in the in the original studio produ production, one, one of the things that we had planned on doing was a new set of graphics. And this is you seeing them come together. Our crowdfunder made this possible. I want to thank everybody that we were able to do this. This was all possible because you guys. So thank you, you so much. Now, it did take me a little while to learn how to do some of this stuff. It, yeah. It was, it was a big difference between, okay, Superman, you can now fly to, yeah, one, two, three, jump just doesn't work. <laughs> True that. <laughs> All right. While I'm here, while I'm here, I'm going to mist a little bit my cad red. And I'm going to get a little of my blue over here. And I'm going to make this darker berry color. Can you see how dark this is? This is very important. Because the berries, believe it or not. And then I'm going to see how I grabbed a little bit on the brush there to make a little drop. Now I'm going to make little clusters. And the reason I do the dark drop first is so that I can create a little berry highlight. Because I like to be fussy like that. Do you like to be fussy like that? I like how much more zoom I have on these cameras. I can I even, I, I'm not even at full zoom. We're, we're at more. A whole lot more. Not too crazy, right? Not too crazy? What are you, doing? you just, oh, is it, is it sticky? Yeah, so it wasn't flowing off my uh, brush well. And what you can see is the consistency I'm trying to get. I'm swirling the brush around and then I roll, roll the brush out. That pulls the paint out of the brush. And I come back and I pull a bead onto it. I could use my dotting tool too. I like dotting. You like dotting? I like it. I just like that there's little berries on the branches. <laughs> it makes me super happy. Because she would. She would collect these little branches for a flower arrangement. It would be awesome and amazing, right? Here we go. Let's put a little bit here. Really like her. The trick with thinning your heavy body paint with water is you don't want to overwater it down. It'll run down the canvas. It'll make drips. 
it's important to thin it from its heavy bodied state, but not take it past where it's uh, like fluid paint, which is still thick enough to stick to the canvas and be pigmented. If that's really hard for you, you can just go get craft paint in a dark berry color and a light berry color. Don't stress yourself out. You guys ready to add that next layer of uh, pine on? Getting back into our number two filbert. Ooh. So here we go. Okay. Now I'm going to pull out my green. I'm going to grab some of my brown and mix it in. And then I'm going to get my white. And what you're going to see is this sort of pine color that this does when you do those colors. It's lighter than what we put out initially. And I'm going to, mostly on the top end into the middle, add some of this lighter color. Not everywhere, just a couple places. Can you guys see what it's doing? Maybe even a little lighter pine color. Because, you know, snow. And these are the strokes where you can come into the middle of the branch and make it feel more pineish. This is a technical term that I use. Take it quite seriously. You should too. You should be very serious and wound up about your painting. I love how I'm just going for my glasses this whole class. <laughs> I'm not even taking them off, man. I'm not even playing. Oh, life. I, Linda was just asking, and someone earlier had said, uh, it was Wanda, but they really loved using beadboards to clean their, their uh, brushes. Yep. Perler that was a boards. tip that we did a while back. Yeah, perler boards is another way of calling them. Yeah, they're the ones that do the pop beads. The perler boards are really good for cleaning brushes. They'll help pull that out. I demoed those. If you look at any of, I have a bunch of videos about my brushes. So brush like, cleaning, specifically. Well, every brush video has a brush cleaning at the end where I show you how to clean that brush. Mm -hmm. Go check them out on our website. You might, might not know. In the description down below. You know. You'd think that I'd know this because I shot all these videos, but I don't remember half of what we've done. Really? <laughs> I dream about it. So do you guys like that second layer that you're seeing on these branches? What it does for you, how it gives you that sort of like more finished look. You've got your dark green and then a little bit of highlight of the light green. This is how you get something to look more finished. These layers matter. But notice, I'm not being heavy with this. I'm not, you know, coming at it like just a couple places, right? And then when I come in the middle, it helps it feel a little bit like a pine branch. So I like the style of pine branch. And you can be just as into this as you want. What if you're really into it? I'm not going to come to your house and smack that painting out of your hand. Also, don't let anyone do that. No one should ever smack, smack your painting out of your hand. That would be very... I say that a lot as a joke, but I don't want to give you guys... Again. Yeah, seriously, because Cinnamon was afraid people were going to come take her brushes away. Yeah, just in case you were thinking that that's okay. That's not okay. No art teacher should come smack a painting out of your hand. I'm not saying it's never happened to me. I'm just saying it's not appropriate art teacher behavior. But back when it happened to me, it was a student, and I couldn't come rolling in there saying, that's not appropriate art teacher behavior. Now I would. Now I'd be like, hey, you, teacher, let's make your students paint. Don't do it. Ask permission before you paint on their canvas. Oh, please ask permission before you paint on their canvases. That used to make me crazy. Surfaces or whatever it is they're <sighs> doing. My mom was the queen of that. <laughs> Paint our students' artwork right here. <laughs> you get right in there. She's like, it's a ginger cook original. <laughs> Which is kind of true. I'm not saying that that isn't true. 
She didn't do it to my nose. She's actually really wonderful and respectful and amazing about my art. She bought me tons and tons of art supplies and took me to lots and lots of art classes. She went to an art class she brought me to. And I appreciate that. And also she paid for art school, which was a big deal. <laughs> yes. Big deal. Big, Multiple art schools. Big, big deal. <laughs> so, Where you context met. of that, right? That would be where we met. And you met Reverend Tally, and mm -hmm. you learned about art stuff, and yeah. I learned art history. Because that's where the class I was in, so if you want to see me, you had to be in that class. And that's when I learned I like sculpture. That's true. And then I went on to do more sculpture. At Glissel here in Houston has an amazing art program. Yep, I did a couple semesters at Glissel. Me too. Yep. I'm actually rather fond of that. You've done. I you've should do a video of, of art schools that I think are worth the money. You've gone to a lot of art schools, though. Yeah. Again, That's I am grateful <laughs> art school was paid for. No, it's nice because you've just had a chance to sample a lot of different. Life. I have, and, I, and I'm very blessed for that. And it's an important thing. All right, so I've rinsed, 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 rinsed this out because I don't want any of this color in here. And I'm going to start doing the next part of my face here. So I've got my skin tone still good over here. I'm going to mist it so it doesn't dry out. I'm going to mist everything so it stops drying out on me. Today is a dry day. What is up with that, right? I've got to get a very, very light skin tone. And come get just a smidge of my ochre. Like how I sneak into it. And so what I'm looking for is a very light skin tone. But my brush is too pigmented, so I'm not getting there. Now, Iram is new go. to painting and says, uh, what can I use as a medium so my acrylic paint doesn't dry so fast? I can only find medium for oil here in my country. No. You want gloss glazing liquid if you can get it in your country. If you can't, uh, I don't know what the translation is, but it should, uh, oftentimes it'll have English and because they'll have like five or six languages on there, depending on where they sell. Retarder. Yeah. Retarder. Not, not slow dry, because a lot of times that's a whole different thing. Retarder. You're looking for a, an acrylic retarder. Mm-hmm. And that's generally what they'll call it. So I've made a very, very light color here. And I'm going to blend this in. Her face. I'm going to definitely, definitely get the second, second coat on. Because this is going to help make her skin seem smooth. And we do want her skin to seem smooth, right? Yes. So, yeah. No. Uh, that is the challenge of acrylic painting is that they dry. I am making sure I've got a nice clean edge around the oval of her face. And into her hairline. It's easy. I can always put her hairline back. So if I get up a little too high, if I get a little bit monsterish, it's okay. If you're not familiar, that was a TV show, Any Monster. <laughs> and uh your husband now i'm gonna put a little ear back in here like you do to make sure that i've got that second coat the second coat's a big deal can't do all the little refined work in the face until we get a good layer of paint to work from interesting question that came up I'm not sure mm. where it came from do you know if cinema was inspired by Westworld or Shogun World for all of this painting? This in that I love Westworld, but actually, uh, um, this is a style you've done for like a long time. Yeah, I would say this is probably more this this type of art has probably come more out of binging and Yasha. Wrong <laughs> <laughs> <on> one half. <laughs> more anime and style. Inspired. Well, just just those worlds. Yeah, just just the construct of those worlds, and I, and I, I I frankly watch a lot of subtitled uh, television. Thing. <laughs> for um, for me, John he sleeps. I'm up at night. Uh oh, see I went too big on that. Oh I yeah, boo boo that. So I'm gonna rinse my brush out before this dries. It's it's clean and damp, and I'm gonna just work that back. Because the paint underneath it is dry, I can easily, easily work it back. And you're wiping that off on your towel between strokes. Between strokes. I'm wiping it off on my towel. And 
And I'm just making sure that these elements, right? So now there's no blue, there's nothing showing through the hand. The hand looks very, very, very finished. The, the little berries are looking good. The twigs looking good. The branches are looking good. This is the fun, fun part. And we've got this drawing so we can do the little glazes, the blushing and all of that. There was a big conversation like, what is I going to show how I got those subtle little shadings? And I am. And we're going to be using that. Um, so now I'm going to work on my wonderful, wonderful kimono. So back into the mix of Cad Red and Quinacridone Magenta. I'm going to get just a smidge of my white into it. So it's just a smidge, smidge. Come here and pull this down. And that's going to look lush. Lush. And that's what we want it to look is lush. Now, if you're waiting for Cinnamon to do her next still life, you can just hit pause at any time. But. <laughs> if Are you waiting for a still life? <laughs> are you guys a a hankering for a multi-day still life again they were just asking about that the multi-day still life mm, those are fun aren't they those are fun those were a lot of fun i actually have one that i'd like to do that i have saved that i think would be really charming we could do another one if you guys like them So as I'm going to come down here, I'm going to get, again, a little mix of the cad red, a little mix of the magenta, getting a smidge of the white. I'm going to come right here. See how that second coat is very smooth and creates a finished, finished block of color? Oh, hi, Twix. I'm going to rinse out just because it's drying on my brush. And this time my mix is gonna be much more to the Cad Red. And I'm being fussy, I'm making sure this is painted in and it looks very clean. That's a big deal, you want things to look very clean, very finished. We're gonna get back into our green. We're adding a little bit of our brown into it like we did before, making that deep green. And come underneath here. If I need to move the painting so I get a better angle at it, I'm going to do that. You do that too. Don't move your body. Don't hunch over your painting. That'll, that'll wrap, mess with your back. Don't do that. Don't hurt yourself. And I'm going to come back into the shoulder, making this deep value. So you can see now it's rich. This is a very good question by May. Hi, May. She was just wondering, what would you do if you wanted that robe to look like velvet? Well, that's a whole painting lesson. Oh, that's, I, I... And it would definitely involve some zinc white. Oh, because you, you can't you can't obviously paint the texture like the way that you're thinking of it and you wouldn't glue velvet to the painting. It would be about catching the way velvet catches light and the way some of it's shiny and the way some of it's dull. And if you could accurately represent that, the painting would look like velvet. All right, I'm going to come here and I'm going to get this again. Okay, when that's all done, all right, next color you're going to go into is just your phthalo green. And you're going to blend into your deep dark color. See how we're doing? Through here. So where your darkest color is, I can turn this around again. Where your dark color is, right, you can blend now with just the phthalo green. 
Nice little transition there. Make sure you've got a nice soft blend like you do. You can come into your sleeve and I'm going to just use my phthalo green to come into my sleeve. Let's come right here, right at the corner, little phthalo green, little phthalo. And now I can get right into the yellow, make that brighter green. And you're going to paint the highlights. That's going. Just wiggle that in, pull that in. This outer edge needs a highlight, right? And now you can see how and if I need to blend between the two, I say I can go get the phthalo green and look how easily I can blend those two. And that's why the phthalo green is a nice transition from the dark value to the light value. If your brush is getting sticky, what do you got to do? You just got to rinse it out. There we go. Need to blend that in. So I'm rinsing out. I'm going to grab some just the yellow. And look, not a nice blend. So this is the case where glazing is actually helping us get the blend. Instead of just working wet into wet, it's the glaze of everything that's helping us. The next thing that I can do is I can take my mix of my magenta and my cad red, and I'm going to get just some black into it. It's not pure black, but it's pretty darn dark. And we'll come along here. And that got a little bit thick. See how thick that got? I don't want oh, that. Yeah. So I'm going to really rinse this out and clean this up. I want this to be a fine line. You sort of stretched it right on down. I did. It's not really, really attached how I want it, but yeah. Now I'm going to try to come back with just the lightest hand I can. And if I need to, I'll get into that monogram liner. What's generally the largest size surface you're comfortable doing on a table easel? A table easel, I wouldn't work larger than 16 by 20, personally. Personally? Personally. I'm going to add a little bit of this dark value right there. A little bit right there. Definitely, definitely, I'm going to come under here and add a little bit of dark value. There we go. So now that's fairly strongly separated from each other. We're kind of really seeing that. I've got to come across here though and get some separation. So I'm going to take my magenta and my blue and that's going to give me kind of this purple. So it's the mix of the cad and the magenta. And I'm using the shadow to separate those spaces. I'm going to get back into my magenta cad mix and then I can blend that there. But you do want it. You do want that value change right there. Isn't that nice? I like that value change. 
Guess what we get to do next? What's that? More skirt. Oh, good. It's kind of like more cowbell. Oh, yeah. I always like cowbell. Now, the rest of the skirt, I'm pretty much going to stay in my magenta. I may add, you know, a little bit of yellow to it. I'm going to go to the bottom first. We're going to see if we get enough coverage with just the magenta. And look, we do. So we're going to get one layer on there, just the bottom edge of this. Right? See how that's sort of covering, but it's also glazing? So, but it's not showing a lot of the canvas through. It's going to really help us get that effect. Okay. Now that, that bottom edge is super, super taken care of. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow. And I'm going to get it into my magenta. But here's the thing. I don't want orange. I still want it to be magenta. And I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to... Take my little tool, 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 and make a little bit. I might put out some more white so I'm not struggling to get to the white paint. Because this is fairly surrounded with other colors I don't want in that mix. All right, a little more white onto the brush. You can see I'm kind of implying a directionality here, aren't I? Layers of the skirt, maybe some movement through the skirt. On the edge of my brush, letting it dry brush out. See how it dry brushes out and creates the layers. Layer one. Ready layer one. Sort of like yeah. ready player one, but ready layer one. You know, sweetie, you are so supportive of my painting. You're like, yeah. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be much fun if it was like, you know, I don't like that color. I think you're doing it wrong. <laughs> it would be less fun for me. <laughs> Might be more entertaining for everybody else. I don't know. So what no. you'll see me do is I'll like go around an object on the edge of my brush, which is the more controllable edge of my brush, and then carefully do the freer, looser painting kind of coming out. You guys see that? There we go. Look at that. She's going. She's going. I like her. Just amply pulling some magentas out. Like we can. There we go. Then as I'm going, I like to get a little more yellow into it. Just a smidge, right? And then a lot of white. This is a very soft cake. Look how I am just dragging it over here. My pressure is very soft. Coming on the edge here, pulling this out. This is an upper part of the skirt. I'm going to pull this down into the skirt, but it is definitely an upper part of the skirt.
I'm going to grab some more of this white from over here. Might as well use it up, right? Mm-hmm. Use up your white. You can see I'm just using the direct. See the curve of the stroke? See the hardest part of this whole skirt is probably this area under the arm. Getting that going. All right, one last. We're going to go right into there with that yellow. Last one. Whew. Do you feel like you've painted a skirt? I still haven't taken my glasses off. It's so weird today. My eyes must be tired. Mm. I'm going to go helping? with that instead of old. <laughs> well, does it help? It really does. Well, so there you go. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Got to be able to see. So you see how light this last color is? Super light. Not white, but just so light. And it's got that little edge of yellow to it. There we go, up over the top, right? She's got some fashion now, doesn't she? Yeah. All right. Woo! Boom, boom, boom. If you have any boo boos, you can just take your green. And clean them up. See? <laughs> you didn't know that was a thing, did you? Cleaned it up. Now, second coat of hair. But not the tendrils yet, just the second coat. This is coming together fast. Is she? Yeah. That's good. When I initially did her, I think I was like talking a lot and walking around. And so I had no gauge about how long she would take. <laughs> like none. But we definitely want her hair to be, you know, dark and beautiful and mysterious. So I'm going to put out a little glazing liquid and it's about to get crazy. I think I can do it from the cap. I don't think it's that clogged. We'll see how I do. Oh, yay. Nope. I clog my uh, glazing liquids a lot. How do I do that? Mostly not closing things properly. There it is. <laughs> That's how that happens. And not cleaning them up. See, it's like right there. I got to clean this up. So this does slow down the drying time of my paint. This allows me to glaze just this product. I'm only recommending this product as a glaze and retarder. Other times, you've got to just get a retarder or a glaze. I've got a little bit of my white here. And maybe, you know, I come and get a little of that skin tone that's still popping around. Maybe with a little more magenta in it this time. All right. There we go. Super magenta. Flip the glaze into that. There we go. So see how bright pink that is? Let me get my glaze. I'm going to come around her face on the outside edge. I just wiped off on my towel because I just had too much on there. And I'm going to start to pink up the pigment. See how it's pinked up? Just around her hairline. And then to a little bit of my lighter color into that. A little more of my yellow ochre.
I'm going to start warming that up. My yellow ochre. Right across her forehead and her face. And her face is a lot warmer, right? Yeah. Get a little bit of my quinacridone. And I'm going to get some of my glazing medium. I'm going to come to the top of her ears. I'm going to just Film all the brush around as I'm blending this in. Just around the heart shape of her face. And then I'm going to get some white, very light color into the skin tone. You definitely want her forehead to be lighter. Okay. Blending this down because everything's going to be about these little incremental stages. Now I've got a little burnt sienna right here. This is my secret sauce. I'm going to come get some of it like you do. And can you see how I'm just working it? Yeah. I'm going to come underneath the chin. And tap in this very delicate shadow. And you can see that the brush is helping me blend this out and the glaze is helping me blend it out. I just wiped off my pigment and I'm grabbing some more glaze. I'll we'll have that nice little shadow. A couple of things I need to put on here. I need to do some very fine line work. In the website, you're going to see some things where it talks about where things are on a face. But basically, essentially, whether this is a fantasy face, whether this is a real face, you're going to have some basic breakups of the head measurements. Yes, in portraiture, this can change a little bit and you have to be very observant. But for the purposes of this, it's going to be like this. Between the head and the chin at the halfway point, that's where your eyes are going to go. You want the envy of your ears to line up with your eyes so that the glasses will fit. Between the eyes and the chin at the halfway mark is the nose, nose, and between the nose and the chin at the halfway mark is the lip. And this is how we're going to get this in. First things first, I'm going to load this up. I'm going to come to that space, and I'm going to put in her eye, eyelashes. Now remember, you want an eye or so between your two eyes, so you need to leave room for that space. I'm going to come right here. Just very delicately, as softly as I can, make a little curve line. See how I've done? The reason that she's a curved line is her eyes are closed and she's looking down. I'm going to come across here. So being a peaceful maiden. So being a very peaceful maiden. Not from The Handmaid's Tale is this girl. Huh. Her life so much better so much better all right now i like to very carefully bring down a little tear duct can you guys see this little tear duct oh we're zoomed in okay good and then as gently as i can pull that out could you use a posca fine tip pen yeah you might be able to use one of those for this if you're not into uh doing this in brush work Remember, it's not cheating. The only thing that's cheating in art, no techniques are cheating. The only thing that counts as cheating in art is forgery. Forgery is cheating. Add a boo-boo there. Can you guess what I'm going to do? Clean brush. Very carefully wipe away the boo-boo. And you just go back and put it back in. Now, once you have that shape in, I like to put in eyelashes. They're shorter towards the tear duct and become longer as they go out. 
I know eyelashes are many of your nemesis. So nemesis. Nemesis. There's a so whole bunch of them. Hopefully seeing me do this. Now, here's my little trick. I can only do the right eye easily. I got to turn the left eye. Let you get down there, John. Do fast. There you go. <laughs> I need to dip in water and get a new load of paint. It's not going off nicely. I'm going to do what I can do. The left eye is oh, ah, always the hardest. All right, I'm going to clean that whole thing off. So just so you know, that's everybody. Has a stronger eye. Stronger side of the painting, right? Ooh, that looked like it lifted some of the paint. It did. It did, because the uh, glazing medium wasn't dry yet. Oh. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all, but it did. We can easily put it back, though. Just get some of the pink. Come back here. Come right under the eye, see? But see, if I'm not alarmist and hypercritical, what will we do? When, when are you hypercritical? I don't know. I don't think you're hypercritical. But see, I figured that I'd have to mix it up. He's not hypercritical. He's actually pretty supportive. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to give our show some liveliness here. Yeah, let's go for a different kind of drama. All right. All right, so I've added some water to my fluid paint. I'm going to try again. Wish me luck, guys. We're all holding our breath. That's a very fine tip. It's a very fine tip. I'm afraid to zoom in anymore. Yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things. These things are just harder than you might think. Get up there. Hold on. Now you're all up there. Hold on. Now, I'm going to... Because I'm just there, I'm going to make this eye a little bit heavier on the eyelashes. So they kind of match each other. There we go. Better. Nope. Hate it. What? Hate it. Hate it. I know we're like on time, but I'm hating it. Oh, we're in, like we're on Sherpa time. Oh, okay. Sherpa time. Like, what are we going to do? Take our YouTube away? Uh, go they on. Could. There are other platforms. Sure. Not saying that I want to go on them. Just saying there are. So if they turn off one, we'll go to the other. We'll what stream. am I do here? Radio Free Sherpa. I'm going to just let that dry for a minute. Okay. In yeah, fact, just... I'm going to hit that with a hairdryer. I'm going to hit it with a hairdryer, fix the pink, and then do these lashes. And they're going to happen. That seems reasonable. This is... Push that. Okay, so she's going to get that done. Let her look that out there. We'll look over and see how you guys are doing. Doo, doo, doo. Well, hello, everybody. Nice to see you guys, all everybody hanging out. And, you know, I always appreciate you guys coming and doing this stuff with us during the day. You know, you've heard it. Oh, there she is. Okay. Oh, here's a good question I had. What, what was your good question? My mind. Oh, that's what it is. This is really good for people to see. Is it? A lot of folks comment that they think that you get it perfect every time, first brush stroke, every time. And <laughs> it's, it's really good for people to see okay. how you handle mistakes when they happen. When they happen. And you're persistent. Yeah, and layers. And persistence and layers goes a long way. Heckling right. from husbands. Well, a husband doesn't I really heckle. Husbands, it helps. I'm telling you. Don't, don't heckle your wives. It does not help. It just aggravates marriages. They won't. All right. To fix that, now I'm going to try it again. Okay. So, heckling aside, um, use low heat. Heard me. Especially during these detail parts. Take a deep breath. Breathe, Sherpa. I'm going to calm my inner self. I'm going to look at my artwork. I'm going to take it in. And I'm going to recognize that. I've done eyelashes a thousand times. I've had eyelashes get weird on me a thousand times. And this is going to be fine. You'll come back after you do her lips or something? No, yeah, I'm going to do it now. She's dry. Okay. These are happening. We're not leaving these lashes until they're in, man. Leave, leave no, no lash unflashed?
Thank goodness. Sorry. You can so think the reason like, oh, I don't him. make any noise when I'm really having to concentrate is because I have to hold my breath, steady myself. And I was trying not to you know, heckle her. Yeah, don't heckle me while I'm struggling with the lashes. Don't heckle while the lash struggling is a habit. Speaking of in Zoom, those are those nails are some hollow. Yes, they are. Okay, so now we have two eyes. Thank goodness that are working. I'm pretty okay with. I'm all right with. They're all right. I'm okay. Not perfect, but they're okay. And again, when I'm fixing something, it's very hard to like, it's the walk and chew bubblegum scenario. I'm going to come right here. Oh my goodness. All right. There we go. We got her in. And so you'll notice that I'm coming back with her skin tone and trimming up that black line where it got away from me. And now I got her back perfectly. And that's how I would get that if it gets really, really away from me. Okay. That being said, guess what I got to do next? Mm. Another super fine Makeup? line. No, another super fine line. So between Ooh. the eyes and the chin, at the halfway point is going to be a nose. So I don't want to paint the whole nose. I don't want to do the whole nose. So all I'm going to do... Is that little mark there. That's it. Now, finally, I have enough information to be able to do the other stuff that I've got to do. I'm going to take a little of my cadmium and magenta mix. And I'm going to take my glaze. Lots and lots of glaze. And I'm going to make sure that I paint in this finger a little bit pink. First four finger, and then I'm going to get their friends, and I'm going to pink them up a little bit, too. I said a little bit, self. <laughs> Wants to pink them up too much. But we're going to come through here, and we're going to pink these up just a bit, too. And I'm using this small brush to get some control over it, and I'm not taking it too far back, right? And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. And I'm going to very carefully come across the knuckle right here. I may have to come back with my filbert to blend it. And I'm going to pink my knuckle. It's a subtle thing. But pinking is really cool when you can do that on your hands. Then I'm going to make sure that I'm going to come up here with a little bit of this pinking. I don't want tons of it, but I do need it. I'm going to pink the nose. Now that implies some blushing, right? It does. It shows that it's a cold day. I'm going to pink right here on the side. Now in this part of skin tone, I'm going to have just a little bit more ochre than magenta. A little bit warmer. I'm adding the glaze so it doesn't dry out on me. I've wiped off so I don't have too much pigment on my brush. And I'm going to begin painting the rest of her skin. I'm going to come across here. Very soft. I need a little bit more white. I'll get it. Come between the eyes. This is a very subtle skin tone. Can you guys see that? Just because yeah. we're not doing, I'm going to come here to the chin and around here. Just because we're not doing something that's hyper realistic doesn't mean that there aren't elements of how we paint those things that we can't employ and enjoy. 
and I'm blending these two areas together. You had no idea that, you had, that this was such a blendy project, right? <laughs> here and blend these two and I also like to come in and get some of that pink some of the pink in my glaze and I like to make sure that right there I get a little bit of blushing I handle a little bit of blushing we're we are blessed with a wide, wide range of viewers. And one of the things that I love is that we have, uh, I know this is a strange thing to love, but we have, a, we, have a, we have an audience of hard of hearing viewers. Ah. And, uh, and. I think that's a good thing to love. I love my hard of hearing viewers. Well, I, it's just a strange thing to be like, you know, I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, so one of the things that was really interesting is the, the picture in picture, now that they can see you, helps because they can see your lips when you're oh, talking. Yeah. And so I've got to keep remembering to not let uh, our uh, not let you dip down below the frame. So oh, okay, yeah, definitely, definitely. But I just I, put I, a lighter. I, it's really endearing. I'm gonna put a lighter bit there. No, and and we love that you guys share that stuff. I'm gonna bring a little bit down where the nose would be. I'm coming across the forehead. Here, under the chin, and so you notice that I put a highlight at her forehead, a little bit down her nose, just where there that her the surface of her face would rise, right? That's what you want. I'm going to be getting a little bit of this skin tone, a little bit of white, right? So we've got our skin tone color, a little bit of white. Leaning our hand in. So hopefully you can see the little bit of blushing on her hand. You can see the slight shadowing of her neck. I'm going to do one more little bit of that. Just barely. See, I'm just getting some of that sienna. Like I just came there between that ear. Even though we're going to have hair there, that's a nice thing to do. Soft, soft, soft. If it gets too strong, you just come back and you work it back. Okay. Wherever anything gets too strong, just tap it back. There we go. Now, the lips. Super fun to do. I'm going to get my magenta and my quin on my little brush loaded up on the tip. There we go. We want just a little tip of it here. We put the lip halfway between the chin and the nose. Upward tiny curve. Downward tiny curve. That's it. Don't That's do more than that. Just did it. Did it. You just implied some kissy lips. Well, she's very delicate little lips. Very delicate little lips. You gotta like allow her delicate little lips. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of my burnt sienna again with a uh, thin, you know, a little bit so it flows off my brush. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna very carefully Trying to get that worked in. Tap a little bit and I just can apply a little nail because I just fussy like that. All right, so she's pretty much perfect. Let's all just acknowledge that. Yep, I would say. Yo, it's missing one thing. Hmm. A signature. No, she's not done. She's almost done. She's I'm getting a little bit more of my little purple because I've got to come underneath my hand from the. Um, come on. Oh, you're tightening up those little lines. Yeah, no, this she's a she's a pretty tight little rendering. 
See how we're cleaning her up? Yeah. That's important. She's important. We have berries to highlight and hair to do. So, berries to highlight. Now I'm going to take some of my nice red and I'm going to come across her adorable little bun with this ribbon. And her ribbon should blow in the air. I'm also going to come here with all this and I'm going to just tap a few highlights on some of the berry. Not every berry. I'm not crazy. Not every okay, berry? You're not crazy if you want to tap a highlight on every single berry. But what if you want to multi-highlight your berries? Have a blast. It's your painting, man. This is my painting. That's your painting. At the end you of the could, day, if you're going to spend this amount of time on something, enjoy it. Could you even go rogue and go sans highlight? I mean, you could. Again, I'm not going to come into your house and slap your painting out of your hand. As no art teacher should. But until then, you should find a happy medium with some highlights. Yeah, if you want some highlights. I like highlights. You might want some highlights. Now, the next bit I felt was super important. I'm going to spray my black fluid paint to help me. Just because it was getting a little thick. As it dries, it can thicken up. You can see I'm pulling it out, loading it on here. What am I going to do? They were just tendrils. asking about those. Oh, we could have little tendrils. They're like, what about snow splatters? Snow splatters still coming. I have forgotten nothing today. They're just worried that I'm going to like rush you out of here. They're like, yeah. don't let her skip anything. <laughs> We're not skipping anything today. Don't do it. Don't leave before we get our splatters. Because splatters are fun. They are fun. And Hi, important. Patty. Patty's here. Hi, Patty. You were, you were curious if you are coming by to see it. I'm going to come here and give her a little back of the neck tendrils. Like you might have, right? Little hairs that... Don't play ball. When that is all done, I'm going to splatter. Now listen, I've got a whole video on splatter. Lots of different ways to splatter paint. Lots of different ways to splatter paint. But my favorite way is to take fluid paint. By the way, it's the same as craft paint. Except mine is professional, has a ton of pigment in it, and craft paint has a little bit less pigment. If you're having problems with pigmentation, you may want to upgrade. I'm going to pour out a little bit. Not that much. And I'm going to take my splattering brush. If splattering has been an issue, this is a really great tool. But again, I've got videos on how to wax splatter, how to flick splatter, how to do it with a fan. There's all kinds of ways to do this. Through a screen, this is just the way that I worked on because I've had to deal with splattering so much. So notice that I'm working this through the bristles. And I'm going to tell you right now, I really like the golden fluid paint for splatter. Because it's the exact right consistency and I don't have to modify it at all. And I just flick back and give her some snow. And what I do like about this is I can have some control over where it goes. So if there's a place I really don't want to put it, I just can control where I'm flicking it. I might flick heavier up into the uh, pine trees, I think. Now we're almost to signing. Oh my gosh, we did her, guys. She was real. She was a Very real thing. Real. But we survived some eyelash problems. We dealt with some things along the way. Who wants to win one of these number one monogram liners right now? Who framed Cinnamon Cooney? Hmm? You've been framed. Oh, right here? Yeah, you're framed. Yeah, I'm really in love with her. Makes me very happy. Reminds me what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my favorite painting signing brush. Which one is that? This is the number one monogram liner. Ah. You can see it's just a joy. It's a nice, nice little... Yeah. My favorite. 
And then I'm going to look her over. Da -da 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 oh, almost forgot the twigs underneath. Look at that. Almost got without it. And you want to show that these, right, that these branches went underneath her sleeve. There we go. Ah, that would have bugged me no end. I'm going to turn around, Johnny. Ready? Okay. Oh, my goodness. I can go without glass. I, I can see. All right. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Not really great at it yet. Oh yeah. But, oh, yeah. but I can do. I'll just go that. <laughs> well, it's true. You do control the horizontal and the vertical. Vertical, horizontal, cubing. Hopefully, you like the painting. I don't know what we're doing here now. I guess we've been here too long. We've been here too long. All right. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.